Good morning, everybody. Welcome once again to another edition of Man Crush. This is Youth and Politics. We have got two wonderful guests who are here. They're going to help me have this discussion because it's a tough one today, but it's an interesting one. Uh, let me introduce Daniel Orogo. He's a political analyst, and he's going to say what he does as well and give his social media handle in case anybody wants to reach out to him. Thank Go you. Ahead. Thank you. Yeah. So what do you do? My name is Daniel Rogo. I am a political man, okay. um, but apart from that is uh, uh, is the work of raising a family okay. and um, uh, trying to make this the communities better, trying mm -hmm. to uh, make my society better mm -hmm. and uh, have a political agenda for the whole of the nation mm -hmm. that would benefit us as a country. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. And what's your social media handle? Um, my Facebook, uh, I'm at Daniel Orogo, mm -hmm. and uh, my Twitter handle is at, at Daniel Orogo as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And our other guest is Omoyo Aribe. <laughs> Welcome very much. I hear you don't want to be called a political analyst, so <laughs> I'll let you do that introduction. F from my village, if they hear you saying Ariba, they'll think I've been baptized <laughs> in town. <laughs> uh, my, my name is Areba Omoyo. Areba Omoyo. Uh, Areba Omoyo. Areba I'm a lawyer by profession. Oh, my apologies. Yes. Mm. Excuse me. I, I'm a lawyer. By profession. By profession. What's your social media handle? My social media handle, uh, Facebook, I have 499 uh, uh, friends. <laughs> 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 on Facebook, it's Arebo Omoyo Samba, and on, on Twitter, it's still at uh, Omoyo Samba. Okay. Well, welcome once again. My name is Joy Mochache. You can find me on Twitter. That is Joy underscore Mochache. And we're going to dive right in. I'm hearing that we're importing fish, you guys. <laughs> and I started with this one because... Um, it's a very easy topic to discuss because it's not necessarily political, it's more of a current affair. And we've got a lot of youth that are watching us right now, and so we've got to factor that in. We're importing fish from China. We're finding out that the fish has lead, mercury, and all sorts of dangerous metals in them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other time, we found out that there was a problem with sugar. Then there was the issue with maize. What is happening? Why is everything that's coming in, or why is everything that's in our country so contaminated? I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't really think the issue is contamination per se. Yeah. As much as uh, the, the health of the Kenyans is paramount, for, for, for me, the problem is that uh, there is somebody somewhere who's gaining at the expense of Kenyans. Mm. Th that is the major challenge, because you realize that um, when the president was at Strathmore sometimes back with the small and medium enterprise guys, they really complained about these issues. And the president was like, we cannot grow a um, um, uh, foreign farm, so we cannot have goods and services coming from outside the country country at the expense of the local ones. Mm -hmm. And now to uh, add salt to an injury, we realize that the fish has a uh, lead and has some poisonous chemicals. So for, for me, let's look at who is gaining from that at the end of the day. Don't we have enough fish in the country? We have enough fish in the country. Yeah. We have fish rotting in Lake Victoria. We have fish farmers in Kirinyaga. Mm -hmm. We have fish farmers in Kisi. Mm -hmm. I mean, have we finished consuming what they produce before we can go out of the country? You know, that's funny because they're saying the reason they're importing is because there's not enough fish, especially in the areas you've mentioned. Is that? Well, well I, I think uh, I really like to join what my colleague has uh, just talked about. Um, it, is, it is important for us as a country, especially uh, we are speaking to a very young nation, um, yeah, a population that is vibrant, a population that is so um, you know, energetic and uh, techno savvy. And, and you see, when a nation takes a direction of trying to import everything, it means that we are doubting um, the skills that we are having. We are doubting what we have. And one of the things we are doubting is the, um, the innovation um, uh, opportunities for young people that we have. Like he have said, we have fish. 
and all these minerals and everything that we mentioned. But then why do we have enough resources and import? That should be the question. Mm -hmm. And then you say that somebody is benefiting. Of course, of course there's somebody who's benefiting on, 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 on behalf of so many people. Young people who are at the verge of unemployed or underemployment and looking for jobs, it could be very important, but why would we revamp you know, try to bring these uh, uh, industries up um, in Lake Victoria. And instead of Lake Victoria, for example, being now choked by water heights, it's nothing going on. And, and, and see um, our sugar industry in, in Western, in the Sugar Belt region, in Nyanza region, in, in Kisi regions, completely done. And then we are importing sugar. I, I, I think there's just something so wrong with our national psyche, you know, as a country. And when something goes wrong, it's deliberately killing the future of this country. So mm -hmm. I think it's important for us, even in this station, and this is a youth station, that we speak to the conscience of young people, mm -hmm. that you see, do not shy away from speaking about politics. Yes. And hence we are having uh, <laughs> one crisis. Yes. <laughs> we really <laughs> need to, uh, don't fear, even as we <coughs> We dance, we, we, we tweet on social media, we post on Facebook. Mention something about what is wrong with your country. Yeah. Awaken the consciences of other young people to make sure that even as we live this lavish and, and this lifestyle, there is something constantly Im Im wrong with our environment. Yeah. And we really need to speak about it. Yeah. So I think everything goes down there. Um, that we, um, even everywhere, uh, we really need sometimes to, even after we have, for example, party, let's have five minutes to reflect about what direction are we taking as a country. And somebody said, as I conclude, somebody says that we are living in a borrowed future. <laughs> like, you see, we are holding it on, on behalf of our children. Mm -hmm. have, you ever be, have you ever asked yourself, why is it that these People grew rich, but my father never grew rich. What happened to 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 these, uh, you know, uh, everybody who is in government? But my father. So it's the question that I don't want my future children to ask me. Why that? Why was there a problem in this country that people were busy importing fish and this fish in Lake Victoria, but you guys never did something about this? So these are questions that I would not really want to be asked about. In the field. that's why I'm doing something now. Uh, and, and I think on a light note is that when when some people are getting uh, the second deck of plot, my grandfather got a second wife, but that is not the point. Oh. <laughs> that, that is why we are not very rich. So, so for any country, what we look at is sustainability. In terms of goods, mm -hmm. in terms of services, mm -hmm. in terms of the labor market. Every country should aspire to grow some of these things from within. So that at the end of the day, nobody threatens you that if we close down the imports in terms of maybe goods or services, the country is going to cripple down. Mm -hmm. So that then you are self-sustainable, you grow what you can consume, you develop your skill set, and I think that is where we are departing from as a country. We are not growing what we have. Yeah. We, 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 the president uh, and the country at large, we have something we call the Buy Kenya, Build Kenya. Mm. Mm. But to what extent does the Buy Kenya, Build Kenya mantra work? Mm. I mean, these are some things that which we launch on the media and, and develop social media pages for them. But when you go to the, um, to, to, to the implementation bit, we don't implement them. Mm. So for, for me, I be very happy as a country if it's doctors we don't need them from cuba if it's fish we don't need it from china if it's prosecutors we don't need from them from the uk if, 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 if it's sugar we don't need it from brazil i mean so, so that as a country mm. we develop our own skill set yeah so what we're looking at is in general that we should focus on the future of our youth mm. particularly not just coming up with <coughs> ways in which to make things better for them but implementing them yeah. because i know we're also very good at doing things on paper, but mm. then actually implementing something, let it run, mm. and yeah, allowing Kenya to be sustainable by itself <laughs> is, is something that we're struggling with. But this is why we are here, even on this panel yes. talking. This mm. is why such, like you said, such conversations are important, and our youth should not be oblivious to what's going on around I, them. I think before we finish on a light note, uh, some MCAs from uh, or, or some county in Central yeah. went to Rwanda to benchmark, I think, on some fish farming or something else, only for them to be told from Rwanda that we benchmarked in, 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 in Kirinyaga oh. County. How? I'm like, these guys boarded an aircraft and went to Rwanda to benchmark. When they got there, they were told, all what we are doing, we benchmark it from. Where you've just come, from. Just come from. Yeah, what a waste of a trip. Before we move to the next question, I'd like to remind you guys our social media handles. 
please remember that's Y254 channel on Facebook. And you can also hit us up on Twitter at Y254 channel and as well as Instagram, Y254 channel. We're moving on right now to talk about KPLC because I'm hearing that there is a stretch about, I think, 100 kilometers worth of land where there has been buildings and people living there. And KPLC is looking to ev evacuate these people because these land, this land is not necessarily land that should be built on or land that should people should live on. <laughs> and what's happening is that they have to leave by the 24th. And I think it's going to be a really sad <laughs> Christmas for some Did, did you know why we are laughing? No, why? The reason why we are laughing is that I'm wondering. Th th this is a topic that is very emotive to Dan. Oh, really? And this is a topic that we have had this conversation <laughs> on different <laughs> forums. Oh, okay. And, and that is why you said that people are supposed to evacuate. Mm -hmm. we, we laughed. And, and this has been our position. I think this, these are some of the issues that we all agree. Yeah. Okay. The number one, mm. we don't need to have people living on public land. That one by principle we agree I mean you cannot just walk it into public happen. land mm -hmm. and just build go near an airport and put up a, a seven-story building go to a road reserve and put up a kiosk we agree that should not or happen somewhere in the UN habitat and yeah. Put yeah. Up a building. we all agree that should not happen yes. but before all these steps are taken we have some kind of government agencies which are involved mm -hmm. before I move in to occupy KBC land mm -hmm. probably I'll get a permit to build or to put up a structure. And then now you cannot come out and sanctify yourself and say that you guys, since you came in and we allowed you, now we are turning your back that you guys, you need to move. Th that, that should not happen. We are punishing, I mean, we, we are not calling them innocent Kenyans, but these government agencies, I'll give you an example of safe apartments in, 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 in high-rise. Yes, actually. They were built and commissioned by the then uh, housing minister, mm -hmm. Soita Shitanda, rest in peace. A government minister commissioned the building. I actually yeah. forgot he's dead. He gave the right yeah. to go I ahead. Mean, I mean, by the time a, gov a cabinet secretary or a minister, as then he was, walks to inspect the building and give them a clean bill of health, that means ordinarily that all these agencies have given it a clean bill of health. How do you come 10 years later or 8 years later and say, guys, you know you built this building near Dam, you need to move. So there, there are some people who sleep on their jobs, mm -hmm. and when they sleep on their jobs, then we don't need to punish Kenyans. Mm -hmm. The president earlier said that now it's time for these government agencies and those people to be personally held responsible. Yeah. But have we seen DCI doing anything? Mm -hmm. Nothing. So we all agree that people need to move from road reserves, from government land, but then all these government people who sleep on the job and sometimes they pick taxes from those people. Those people pay land rates, uh, they pay business permits. What happens to them? Exactly. Uh, uh, I can't say no. Um, I think uh, on this topic, we've we've really delved into it. You you may have exhausted it yeah, elsewhere, no, 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 but exhausted it's, it's, here it's, too. It's, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, that I, I'm just still going to um, really um, deliberate on some of these things. Like Arab has mentioned, any process that comes as a result of ev evacuation or an eviction, there is a procedure. Yeah. There is a process, and. Uh, well, I mean, it's been found that they were living in a land that uh, belongs to KPLC. But then, who actually gave the authorization for them to start putting up these structures there to stay? Or these people paying these uh, rates? So if, if this is confirmed, then one of the things uh, the, the authorities need to do is to work on a, a, comp a compensation procedure to compensate them for living there and what they have been paying, because they have been paying the government, their rates and the services are there. These are guys who, like you've mentioned, it's headed towards a festive season, and children will, going, will be going back to school, to yeah. open the schools. Do we have that kind of humanity, or are we just saying, you guys need to live, live and go? The human beings who've been there, exactly. their, their families who are raised there, mm -hmm. their children who know that as their only home, what, what do you have that in mind that you, uh, you really need to begin to think about that? But apart from this, I, I really need us to uh, see the prosecution bodies taking place, not really uh, just a roadside pronouncement. You know that we've seen, you know, they need to leave and I'll hold the people who issued, yes, the president has issued this kind of notice mm -hmm. and I've um, asked people to follow up through. We really need to see how many people have been held responsible. Uh, I don't know even how would you hold a, a dead person responsible, <laughs> but I think uh, those who are actually part of the process, the procedure that issued um, an authority 
for them to stay should actually be held so that it serves as a lesson for the rest mm -hmm. if such things are still happening right now but again there have been a problem with kplc and you see this this institution i think just needs to be i, I don't know what can be done be Wh which it, problem be it, uh, yeah. hi hi hiking uh, you know prices for for you know for power be it you know using there, there just been a lot of issues and i think they're still having a court case by a fallen boy uh, in case yeah. so i think this parastatal uh, w um, yeah, and is in under the minister of energy which is having a problem in itself again as a ministry yeah. so i think uh, it really needs to be looked up to into totality the whole thing about energy in this country and and sometimes I even think instead of us uh, thinking about electric current we really need even to think about the sustainable um, sustainable uh, energy, uh, energy yeah. you know wind power and all these things that yeah. we so that uh, whenever such parastatals are having problems we do not be affected so much by these kind of issues exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know Kenya a lot of scandals have been going on and um, I'm bringing up the NHIF one because. Okay. <laughs> 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 even, even before the, you finish, I love. <laughs> let, 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 let <laughs> okay. Uh, Should I let you no, express what on, you wanted to express? Or <laughs> 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 some things in these countries, you yeah. think it's a movie. Yeah. Uh, you oh, can you yeah. can't proceed. <laughs> <laughs> a receptionist boarding an helicopter from town to a river. I mean, it can only happen in a movie. Yeah. Uh, you you can continue. Uh, <laughs> I mean, which movie? But you know, this 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 is just. I mean, scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal. And I still can't get, I can't wrap my mind around how mm. a receptionist is able to afford that kind of lifestyle. I just I, I can't wrap my head around it. And so I'm asking myself, who is behind this? Mm. Is it, how, how, what's happening? And because before that we had the issue with um, NYS, yeah? We've just talked about KPLC. And... It just seems it's not ending. It's not uh, what is wrong with our, how can I put them? What is wrong with our structures mm -hmm. that we have put mm -hmm. up to help our people? Mm -hmm. Such, you know, structures like NHIF. I, in any country, if um, there are some sectors you're not supposed to make money from. Yeah. If you realize that in any country, profits are being made from health, from security, and from education, know that that country is doomed. Mm. Because these are very critical sectors which then are, be, are supposed to be used to propel the country to another uh, level. So that if there is somebody who is making a profit in the health sector, then there is a life being lost somewhere. Mm. Yeah. If there is somebody who is being who's making um, a profit from the security sector, then there is insecurity somewhere and the life is being, is, is, is being, is being lost. And I'll give three examples. You remember about the armed personnel carriers that we, we imported, I don't know, from China where? Which then, one which steps on a lion mine and then uh, it's torn apart and you think it was a Suzuki Alto or something of the sort. Mm -hmm. a and you wonder how do we procure such uh, defective uh, items? You come to the health sector. What was the reasoning behind the National Hospital Insurance Fund? Yeah. The reasoning was that let this be a contributory scheme so that at the end of the day I it's like uh, some, type of some type of insurance. Let's put the money together to benefit those who will fall ill. Mm -hmm. And in an event where you don't fall ill, then you have that assurance that you are okay. And if you fall ill, you know that it will be paid for mm -hmm. from somebody else's contribution. That is how insurance works. Insurance works in that you have that peace of mind that you are making a contribution somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, if you fall ill or something, a calamity happens, you'll be compensated or you'll be uh, put in a better position than, th than, than which you were in that calamity. So now for the National Hospital Insurance Fund, a lot of money is being put in there from taxpayers. It's actually a compulsory contributory scheme by those people who are employed. And for the unemployed people, there has always been that campaign of the monthly contributions uh, by maybe uh, by, by, by phone or by something else. Mm. But now, if you look at it critically, contributions are being made in billions. At the end of the day, the patients do not get paid for. I think it's pay, it pays for bed or something else. Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't yeah, get to pay for everything Just compressively. Right, yeah, 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 if you yeah. go to a hospital, now it's when they're trying to compressively do something like MRI and dialysis and such. But then look at the scandals which are happening. You having a receptionist taking an helicopter ride from town <laughs> to the river, 
because they don't want they to. They don't want traffic. The traffic. Yeah. And where is that money coming from? Maybe look, look at what they earn. No, 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 Dan. Dan, 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 wait, Dan, wait, Dan, no, 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 Dan, you can't try to justify that bullshit. You don't, no, 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 cost per power. Right. It's so much. So, th th I mean, th this is some kind of <laughs> mediocrity and some kind of thuggery. We cannot call this corruption. This is some kind of thuggery and some kind of robbery <laughs> which is happening in this country daylight. by some civil servants. Daylight. This is daylight, daylight, daylight robbery. Oh, wow. And and this, and this has touched you people. And 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 I mean, look, go to Kenyatta Hospital. Okay. Go, go to Bagadi. Look at the number of people who are suffering. And look at this idiot. I'm sorry, I have used that word. Look at this idiot who takes an helicopter ride yeah, on taxpayers' money we, we because he sits. No, 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 no. I'm going to use that word. Oh. Look at this person mm. because he sits in the tender committee and the matter is before court. But then you cannot justify that kind of living. You earn a salary of 10 shillings, but you are wearing shoes of 100,000 shillings. Then you cannot justify some things. Some blessing. No, you are blessed to what? To, to, yeah, to, no, 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 no. Miracles happen. Uh, which miracles? Has it happened in you? Has it happened in your life? I'm not trying let's to, see what to, Daniel has I'm not to trying say. to justify um, <laughs> daylight robbery or target. You're free to play the devil's um, advocate, by the way. What I'm just saying is, you know, uh, he, you are a lawyer. He is subject to due process of the law. And uh, I think right now the investigatory board is trying to find out how how did he manage to accumulate such a wealth by being a receptionist. That we leave to the uh, authorities. But I'm saying if, like you said, for example, there are sectors in this country that you should never, never try to draw money from in illegal ways. Mm. And he's mentioned, especially health of a nation. A healthy nation is always a wealthy nation. That, that has been said. But one of the most striking things is like, you, you see, I really uh, don't understand. In the backdrop of the president launching universal health coverage, you know, and in, in the backdrop, Somebody somewhere is trying to tear that apart, that kind of a good initiative, by scandals like this. So we are seeing a government, and the reason as to why I say that the buck stops with the president, he can issue a directive, it's just a directive, that he needs this to be investigated, he needs this to be brought to book as soon as possible. I have not heard him talk about that, but I think he's probably he will talk about that, because these will make his legacy, especially on uni health, universal health coverage, uh, uh, just a mere PR. People need to act on this. But joy the most, in, uh, the dynamic that I would want to give it right now. I always give the youth dynamic. But in areas mm -hmm. where, for example, employment of people who are serving at, at NHIF or these bodies, the young people who are skilled and are still tamaking, the money you even still, even if it's not for, even if it's for healthy coverage, but then you are denying other people opportunities mm -hmm. that they might have could by getting employment in these services mm -hmm. because you are you are earning illegally, where you are taking resources that could have been channeled toward the initiative. So mm -hmm. I think this is something that Arabo said. It's close to the hearts of not only us here, but so many Kenyans because the problem we are having as a country, we are an ailing country, mm -hmm. and by ailing country, we really need to have a very comprehensive universal health coverage and a cover. For okay. Help. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, um, thank you so much for that. Your views have just been amazing. And actually, we're going to go and take a break right now. So we'll be back in two minutes. Please stay tuned. How do you perform with an idiot on a live? No, no.